Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, this is Sky coming on to make another installment in our awesome seven days of solstice um, video series. Uh, welcome back. I hope that you're all uh, doing well. I wanted to come on and make a video in this series about Neptune. Um, I haven't been focusing a lot on Neptune lately and I thought that it was long overdue to come and talk about the status of Neptune, where it's at, what it's doing, how it's affecting us, and um, what its current cycles are meaning for the collective. Um, so yes, everyone, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to hit the subscribe button below, turn on the bell notifications, and definitely check out the description box and comment section as well uh, to get more information on this channel's offerings. Before we continue with the video, I do want to give you an update about my content. Yes, all of the 12 monthly sign-by-sign -sign forecasts are now exclusive to Patreon. Over there, you can find all of the readings ad-free, and you can also get weekly forecasts called Tea Chats, where I reflect on the current energies of the general time and talk about upcoming astrology transits. All of this is paired with wonderful audio quality and efficient navigation to help streamline your access to this premium content. So yes, going hand in hand with this update, I am offering a seven day free trial to my Patreon page, meaning that you can get your first seven days free. So uh, yes, that will be linked below in the top comment, as well as in the top right hand corner of this screen. Definitely come and check out the new updated Patreon. We have a lot of really exciting premium content over there, and it's just uh, beautiful and very easy to uh, work with. So um, thank you all so much, and let's continue with the video. But yes, um, let's talk about <laughs> Neptune. Okay, so um, of course, ever since 2011, we've had uh, Neptune in Pisces. And uh, believe it or not, it's not very long now until Neptune will be entering Aries. Yes, uh, March 30th, 2025, we have Neptune entering into the sign of Aries where it will retrograde back um, and return in February of 2026 to Aries uh, for the final time. Um, so from now until 2026, um, similar to the timeline that we have of Saturn being in Pisces, right? 2023 to 2026, uh, Neptune in Pisces from 2011 to 2026, uh, we have a very, very important and meaningful journey with the sign and archetype of Pisces as Saturn and Neptune will be spending time at the same time um, in the same sign, which is always uh, very um, important to think about. You know, Saturn and Neptune, um, of course, all, it's kind of like a bit of a an interesting combination happening there because, of course, you have Saturn and Neptune sign of Pisces and Neptune in its home sign of Pisces. So um, everything that the sign of Pisces represents, you know, from... Um, a deep, emotional, uh, highly spiritual, highly even religious uh, components of life, um, also illusions or media, um, art, music, uh, creating fantasy, um, turning fantasy into real life with a Saturn in Pisces, also uh, delusions and um, kind of reconciling what is and is not real. We have a lot of parsing through to do in this timeline. And um, I also wanted to talk about, uh, yeah, we'll make time for both uh, the positive and uh, more negative uh, things associated with these transits. But um, what I really wanted to theme this video around was like really understanding how deeply meaningful and significant this general period of time is, um, really the entire time of Neptune being in its home sign. I mean, certainly we've seen a lot of negatives. I know that, that there's so much chaos in the world. There's so much confusion. There's so much turmoil. But also there has been a really kind of like magical expansion or even like inversion into... Um, the shadow side of life, uh, we've had a major expansion of shadow work, of um, also other kinds of spiritualities, um, sort of, I think, a resurgence of, um, you know, more uh, uh, spiritual practices that were uh, more sidelined have uh, come back in during this transit. Also, a lot of uh, cultural uh, connection and a lot of um, uh, much more people coming together who uh, previously have not been able to come together. Um, of course, Neptune in Pisces has been highly connected to themes of immigration, of uh, crossing borders, um, as we've seen maybe uh, more of a um, uh, easygoing 
uh, time, in some cases, not not in all places, of um, moving into unknown territories. Um, and I kind of feel like that has been the main uh, thing that Neptune and Pisces in this cycle has represented, is like exploring the unknown, um, having spiritually or emotionally significant experiences by entering into unknown depths or entering into unknown territories and then coming out as a more wholesome person in some cases or coming out with a deeper more um worldly knowledge so um a rise in global uh, wisdom or a certain like monolithic form of global wisdom, I feel has been um, an integral part of this Neptune transit through Pisces. And we're really going to see that over this next oncoming three years as we will have Saturn and Neptune. So it's not going to be so like um, ethereal. It's not going to be so fantastical. The Saturn uh, presence in the sign of Pisces is going to create a more materially real um, channeling of this feeling of monolithic global wisdom. So um, I feel like this is sort of the brink of our consciousness right now, monolithic global wisdom coming to these like higher level agreements or consensuses coming to these um, places or planes of consciousness or connection that transcend previous limiters or transcend previous ideation of what limitation was. So yes, we have a major crossing of borders and boundaries. And I think that that's been something that's been really hard for people to reconcile over this last over this last 12 years so far as I'm filming this video in 2023, though this may be a very relevant video for quite a long time to come. I think it's been really hard for people to reconcile like what the previous consideration of reality was, what the previous way of doing things was, how the world was previously seen, what hierarchy was before. As I feel that Neptune and Pisces is a totally hierarchy displacing kind of energy and a type of uh, energy that really grows through discohesion of the previous status quo. And um, I think that we're in the most intense period of that. Of course, when a planet is transiting the final degrees of any sign, as Neptune will be doing over this uh, final three years that it's in Pisces, that's when it's at its most potent point. So we have Neptune moving towards, yes, of course, the anoretic degree, the 29th degree of Pisces, and it will be there mostly through 2025. Okay, so um, yeah, we can we see 2025 is probably a major year of high change. Can I give you a little bit of a warning to like make preparations and have certain stabilities um, in place for that period of time? I can definitely um, stand by that type of, um, I suppose, uh, preparational philosophy. But um, that's the other thing. It's kind of hard to prepare. Some of you would have been saying that, like if you're someone who enjoys to be prepared, enjoys to have stabilities, enjoys to have like money saved. Well, now there are things like inflation and maybe it doesn't matter. Or there are also things like... Um, economic instabilities that lead, you know, you know, like, for example, if you've got like all this like property or all of this land or all of this, like, um, things that are like transcending fiat currency, then well, it's hard to upkeep it, or it's hard to maintain it, or something kind of creates a discohesion in any form of material stability. So that's why we've had such an integral rise, yes, of spiritual, religious, and okay, so so this is good. The dogmas or the um, feelings of connection to any type of perceptive idea, whether this is philosophy, whether this is spirituality, whether this is religion, whether this is politics, whether this is some kind of weird monolithic combination of all of these things, we can't, it's just the previous boundaries and limits aren't working and um, will over this next three years continue to kind of like tarnish or kind of desperately assert the previous status quos and through that more intensely deteriorate or um, invert. So yes, we have like this, this kind of quantum mechanic, I feel, during this time where it's like they're trying so hard you actually invert the energy. It's a little bit of a reverse psychology kind of um, quantum that we're in where it's like, okay, you're going to try really hard to do that business or you're going to try really hard to do this or that. Um, oh no, all of a sudden it's as if um, 
the effort means nothing or um, also uh, th- again this pushes people into more of a like ethereal spiritual focus where they realize that sometimes these physical efforts or these um, human relationship oriented paradigms just cannot really be predicted or there's a certain human element or a certain uh, societal element where it's like gosh i can try so hard to save up but it doesn't mean that i get any of that okay or i can try so hard to establish some type of real world status but it doesn't mean that that someday won't invert and completely be meaningless okay i can do nothing i can do whatever i feel called to do i can disconnect or be separatist but it doesn't mean that those types of people necessarily have any type of access to what actually will eventually work either. Um, so it's kind of like pick your poison type of energy, isn't it, with Neptune and Pisces, especially coming towards these later degrees. And that's where we um, transcend the human experience. As we understand that there's something deeper than all of these strategies, all of these systems, all of these replications, all of these uh, pyramids, okay? Thinking of like, uh, for example, the pyramids in Egypt, like what systems it took to build that. Thinking of architecture, what types of economic systems or what types of um, people movements or what types of dogmas even it took to um, facilitate some type of large human creation. Um, The systems uh, within these types of precepts are, or or within these types of um, sort of hierarchical uh, schematas, I suppose, are completely changing during this time and transforming, and people are um, getting way more psychic, okay? Uh, Way more empathetic, a huge rise in empaths, which is going to definitely spur a lot of unemployment and a lot of, and yeah, definitely probably movements like uh, UBI movements or... um, uh, And again, more inflationary types of things because a lot of people just really can't do it. A lot of people have totally like um, transcended the working class, for example, without even having to have had to become rich to do so. Um, And that's going to be, I think, further supported um, in the real world somehow. I don't know how, I don't really know why it's happening, but I think there's some type of higher force um, connecting to that where it's like now people just, uh, and and yes, any type of like service economy or any kind of like uh, things that we have had previous dogmas attached to, like we work and work and work, and then we get to play or we um, get to benefit from the systems eventually. Um, all of that is kind of like sort of devolving. And yes, I think there's a quality crisis because of that. So it's kind of like none of this is necessarily for better or for worse, though I do feel there's some type of greater significance behind why people are um, changing the way that they sort of psychically, when I say psychically, I mean at a level of psyche, the way that they psychically perceive their proximity to things like job, work, career, uh, material. Um, And what is doing that? Well, that's social media, okay? Um, So now we have access to things on these devices that we could have never seen before. So it kind of is another, it's another um, presence or another societal construct that's kind of on one hand serving to bring a lot more people together and yes there are many businesses that revolve around social media now and that is generating some type of economic activity um maybe all of it i don't know (laughs) i'm kidding um but uh it's also leading people to feel like okay now i don't have to save money to go on my trip to europe or my trip to uh, South America, I can just like visit it through my screen or um, now I don't have to um, really try to like save up to buy that sports car. I can like watch it on the screen and it's kind of like giving me the same reaction as having it or so we think. And so it's kind of like something that really, again, it serves to facilitate discohesion of the previous status quos and like people just don't have the same goals anymore. People don't have the same... Um, People don't have the same needs anymore. And I do feel it's very ungrounding as well, right? Neptune and Pisces being one of the most um, ungrounding uh, transits that can possibly happen in astrology, of course. Definitely an increase of illicit substance uses. Um, so like uh, also li- like a fentanyl crisis, um, very much a symptom of Neptune and Pisces. Um, but then also... Uh, I think that social media uh, also it has somewhat of a effect on the brain chemistry, not in the same way that like substances do, but 
I mean, it's there and like caffeine and um, all of these different substances also really expanding. During Neptune and Pisces, um, the chemicals also used on foods, on clothes, uh, uh, Neptune and Pisces being like chemical industry as well, uh, Saturn and Pisces too. Definitely, I can tell you guys, 2023 to 2026, be very, very careful with um, anything that has like a chemical smell, um, new furnitures that off gas, uh, chemically uh, fer fertilized or pesticide uh, foods. Um, yeah, there's going to be, I think, a crisis of that with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. And a lot of us are considering, I think, um, urban exodus or moving away from urban centers. But then also there's going to be probably a weird political issue where like people who have inhabited rural areas for a long time may not be super welcoming to people who are coming from cities. Um, so it's kind of like starting to already integrate... Uh, being in multiple places, so having uh, connections into that, that that's the one of the best ways that we can work with Neptune and Pisces energy is having very eccentric connections, so connections to different kinds of groups, different types of people, different areas. And that's where social media uh, can be very um, very much a blessing because that is actually an area where it becomes possible to actually um, forge these new kinds of connections. Um, and all of these things that I'm mentioning, like um, social media, food industry, um, currency uh, economy, service economy, career, all of this stuff, it's weird with Neptune and Pisces, because of course you have the two polarities, right? You have like the two fish, you have the, the yin and the yang. It's not good or bad, and it's in a polarized way both. So while some people may have like a really severe addiction to social media that's like creating a total social discohesion in their life other people will have such a blessing through it or have like an incredible business success through it that totally elevates them out of a poverty grid um so we can't really assign blanket statements of like it is a good thing or it is a bad thing it's a powerful thing and in that way i think that it can be uh, harnessed in really good ways of course as a social media creator myself i try to um, harness it in a good way um, and I think there are a lot of us who are trying to do that and are, and are succeeding with that. A lot of people here on this channel succeeding with that. Um, a lot of people uh, viewing this video succeeding with uh, that. And, and even if it's not like in a business sense, maybe just through like connecting to people with similar interests or uh, creating um, <laughs> communities or friendship groups that totally transcend the third and even the fourth dimension, okay? because it's like we're not having to be there in person, but it's still connective. So you see like human consciousness is leveling up here through Neptune and Pisces as it would, right? Like Neptune finishing. I mean, just imagine Neptune. It takes like 200 years for it to go around the sun. I don't know. How long does it take? Let me Google that real quick. Um, how long does it take Neptune? To 165 years. Yeah, 200 years. 165 years for uh, Neptune to go around the sun um, that's a major level up in human consciousness. And when we hit Neptune and Aries, okay, we're probably so like 26, especially when we're really into it, like 27, 28, when we really are past the cusp, there are going to be things that we can't even perceive of now that we understand. And also, I feel that for the certain type of person who's very well spiritually developed, for the certain type of person who is independent, but also wanting to connect with people, wanting to form greater cohesion in their lives, people who are light workers, people who are transcending their need for money, um, transcending the need also for like things like closure or like telling an ex how you feel or like any type of like past reversion or, or wrath uh, orientation people achieving forgiveness or people achieving um, some type of trust in a higher force. Um, the the sort of world creation that I'm feeling, okay, by the time we get to Neptune and Aries, is a paradigm that is like very, very wholesomely supported for the type of person who has individually and collectively really alchemized. Okay, so things like, yes, AI, social media, 
uh, the economic system that we will have by then that we don't have right now um, is actually going to make these people so much more of a force and so much stronger. But there's going to be a large percentage of people that it doesn't help either, um, especially especially people who form up the previous status quo. So like old, I suppose, like um, proletariat and yes, old bourgeoisie types of people actually really struggling, like people who basically fulfilled that previous uh, system, which I think is a little bit irrelevant now, um, or it's certainly... Um, it's through that third or even second dimension worldview that you can even like see those types of terminologies, you know, those Marxist terminologies. Um, but uh, it's not to say that it's not like uh, something that is considerable now either, but it's much more complex now. And it's more of like a constellation, I would say, when you're talking uh, not just economic status, but like how, you know, material power or independence comes through. It's going to be a little bit more complicated than that, okay? And it's going to um, be quite a few people who are in those previous status quo positions that it's not very pretty for, okay? Or that it really struggles for. And yeah, that's something we're going to have to address. And I don't have all the answers for that. It's certainly, I'm just kind of giving you like what I'm seeing at a like top-down view um, uh, of the uh, sort of like social um, hierarchies that we're going through. It's going to be more of a constellation. Um, that's the best word that I can put it through. And it's going to definitely be more of a <sighs> either sink or swim. Yeah, it is going to get more sink or swim, you guys. And it's going to be like, um, okay, some people work really hard and they get everything. And then also some people have a certain like spiritual or even like a marketing, advertising zest weird to put both of those into the same um category and that should not really be but that's just what's coming through uh will also just have the world at their fingertips and, and not really have to try that hard but it's going to also be like a lot of um paranoia for some people or a lot of like security concerns as well especially with social media you know things like ip addresses things like um yeah we're, we're looking at a major security crisis already in 2023 but like also um with this new economic system that is probably coming in by like 27 or 28. Um, I'm also feeling that it could be optional though too. Like it's not like a mandated kind of like system. It's like choosing kind of like we choose to have credit cards or we choose to um, like, like we still can use cash, but like most of us don't. Um, but it, there's going to be something like that, I think. And then there's also going to be sort of like a, um, a sort of decentralized chaos as well where like different systems and different companies and different 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 it's not like all centralized but we but some people want it to be and it's kind of going to be like this i think a lot during saturn and aries neptune and aries um until people like basically understand what they're doing and what's new for them at an individual level like we're going to have a major increase of individualism um during those later years but yes here during neptune and saturn and pisces it's not quite like that it's more of a it's more it's not just more collective but it's very hard it's actually quite hard for individuals right now and it's more of a burden i think to be doing things alone like diy culture being like very in shadow right now i feel and um what i'm what, what i think the most important thing to extract from that all of that uh, channeling and uh understanding is that there is a certain equation or a certain type of just self-perception or energy that one can hold to like really not have a lot of um a lot of you know oppression or difficulty or pain um in these oncoming years um but it, it's it takes a lot of self-understanding and it also takes a lot of no as well, like saying no to certain people and like seeing um, previous oppression or seeing previous um, pain points and really talking about it or revealing it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of that going on and a lot of, yeah, there's going to be a lot of like, uh, and I won't make a judgment call on it, but there's going to be a lot of people like saying this person did that to me before or uh, this system, and more like at a systemic or institutional level, like this system or this institution has done this to me and look look at my life and look at the promises and look at what I actually have. There's going to be 
a lot of that, like what I've been promised or what one has been promised and like what one actually now has and, and these kind of like, like the memories of the promise and the, um, the sort of like ideals or, or fantasies or dreamscapes versus like what it really is to live in that generative place. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of people like generating dreams, right? Neptune and Pisces. And let's really get back to the center point of this video, which is being in this final time of Neptune and Pisces, generating dreams, generating better ideas about life. Such a such and such such a, such a giving time that we're not necessarily going to feel the same way after 2026. Okay, so we still got plenty of time. Like, and honestly, you guys, like these next three years, it's just going to be so giving to think about what do I want from life? What is my dream? What is my ultimate cause? We've been talking about stuff like that. It gets a little bit dogmatic, but it's also um, important to dream during this time and important to allow ourselves to do so. Um, and it's actually totally fine to not be like pushing that hard until like 2026 with that Aries energy or to be growing at a more spiritual or connective level right now, rather than in like a really like physical or material level. Also um, self reclaiming a uh, deep knowledge of our why factor, um, fixing problems, solving energy knots, um, understanding the motivation, the central core motivation of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what it means in the future. Um, none of this is stuff that really happens overnight, though I guess for some people it could. Um, but it's nice to know that we still have a lot of time there. And you have to remember, Neptune is at home in Pisces. It loves the sign of Pisces. In some way or another, what is happening right now in all of our lives is deeply meaningful and i really recommend trying our best to transcend any type of like okay mentalities of hate there can also be like a dogmatic hate i feel with neptune and pisces and neptune and aries as well and um that's going to be a really big challenge for some people um and then then you know for some people it's just a non-issue uh, very good if it's a non-issue for you um but it's easy to channel some of these energies or some of this confusion as like i'm just so angry that it's only that person, you know, kind of like witch hunts, like hysteria is like, it's only that person, the reason why the economy has fallen, or it's only like, it's only that person, the reason why, you know, my health is so bad. Um, and like, like this displacement or this projection there. Okay. This is another thing. Very possible. Neptune and late Pisces. Very important to think about, um, certain people shouldering undue blame or, um, collective, collectivized canisters of anger projection. So like it's because of that political institution or it's because of that person, um, all of this like othering or all of this um, projection. And some of it's like maybe right and most of it isn't. And most of it is like bonding over projection or bonding or trying to connect with other people through some type of like feeling that is like really angry. And that's, that's one of the um, very... Uh, potential negatives or shadows of Neptune and Pisces, right? It's like a dogmatic hatred or dogmatic um, anger, but it can also switch to a much higher thing, like a more of a profound feeling of love, like trusting people, loving people, loving the potential. Um, and the way in which collectives during this time will choose one or the other kind of determines a lot of like the next entire cycle of Neptune for the next 165 years. And it kind of determines like how high vibrational or low vibrational, you know, whether people are succumbing to hate or, or moving towards love, this kind of is going to be determining how high vibrational or low vibrational the general collective plane is for a long time to come. So I just want you guys to know that that's where we're at. And to conclude this video, like bringing it back to a very central, um, finite point, um, knowing you and knowing who you are or knowing why you're doing it or knowing and understanding your sort of energetic body and also your greater capacity for love and acceptance and trust in God or the universe or whatever you trust in that is uh, transcendent of materialism. Um, 
that is not only going to lead you to know yourself, but it's going to lead you to know the world and to know to know answers to things, okay? And it's going to help a lot in solving some of this confusion. And um, that's going to be totally available to people over these next three years. And um, so, so why I, I just wanted to really make that point over about that last 20 seconds of the video because there's a lot of people getting really distracted by um, TikTok videos, by uh, social media, by um, uh, money, cash, business, uh, and all of that kind of connects to this energy too, but it can be very distracting. And I will say that we need very honed senses with this transit. Otherwise, we're going to fall behind a little bit. Okay, so like um, knowing anything that like doles your senses, really bright flashing lights, really bright screens, really strong smells, really loud noises... Um, a lot of um, sexual encounters, a lot of drugs, a lot of um, uh, anything, anything like that, uh, going into space, I don't know, um, what, whatever it is that we're doing, okay, um, that stuff should probably be decreased or limited during this time so that we're more sensitive to the more minor uh, changes at hand. But um, anyway, everyone, thank you so much. I really enjoyed filming this video for you. Uh, enjoy the uh, continuing seven days of solstice series that we're in. And um, definitely check out the description box below if you'd like to support my content. Uh, this channel is on Patreon. Uh, one way or another, there's uh, free ways to support as well just by subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the thumbs up button, and uh, commenting. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone. I hope this resonated, and it's so nice to talk about Neptune as Neptune needs talking about uh, sometimes. So i uh, talk to you soon. Bye.